there's actually two of them. I don't know. I can't. It's hard for me to see in this light. Uh, there we go. And right down to the right, there's another one. I don't. Can you kind of see him there? And the bees. They were just over on my fuchsia basket, so I ran out here as quick as I could. I think they're taking a little rest. All right, let's get on to the garden tour. All right, today is Saturday the 9th, and we're just gonna do the garden update. The hydrangea is looking beautiful. The fuchsia basket's starting to open up a little bit. I need to get out here and deadhead it though. That way I can get more blooms for the hummingbirds. Their feeder is just right there. But this hydrangea is white, but it's also really beautiful. I don't know if you can see it in this light, but it gets this little tint of blue. It's so pretty and so delicate. This might be called Blushing Bride. There's a little bit of chartreuse. It's just so beautiful. Like, the, yeah, this bloom, you can really see the little bit of blue. It's so gorgeous. I love hydrangea. And then this one's finally opening up. Last week, it wasn't doing much. I'm not sure, but I think this one might be called Endless Summer. And it does a variety of colors, pinks and purples and blues. All of these are young. They're maybe, this might be their third summer. And depending upon what kind of soil you have, whether it be acidic or alkaline, determines what color, except for the white. You can't change white to blue. They just, white is white. And then this pink should never change either, is my understanding. It should always stay pink, but we'll see. I suppose over the years, as the soil changes, it could turn dark purple, which would be fine with me. But just look at how beautiful those are. When they first open up, they have that beautiful chartreuse, and then they get that hot pink. Just gorgeous. And here's one of the blooms. This is the mop head type. They're not very large. This plant doesn't get a whole heck of a lot of sun. It gets the morning sun that it's getting right now. And then that's about it. Once it goes up over the house. Because this is a south facing house. So it's up under the eave. But just look at how beautiful that is. And I just got done watering, so there's lovely drops of water on the petals. But, oh, just look at that. When I was growing up, my gran, she had a gigantic hydrangea, and I really missed that bush. I wish I would have taken it with me when we sold the house. Another pretty pink one. And then the Colin vine I transferred from the front yard and I need to cut it back, but it's doing all right. My nippers broke, I need to get new nippers. Okay, we'll stop it here and move over. So the garden, it's growing a little bit. The zucchini are getting bigger and the squash. And then that little runt, it's hanging on. I've considered uh, changing the spot of this one with that one, just because it's gonna get really close to the butterfly bush. But then over the last week, it's really put on some new growth. So I don't know, I haven't quite decided. I might. It's been very cool here. We actually had some rain over the week. So I haven't been out here a whole heck of a lot. 
you know, when it's cold. It's not cold, but when it's just gray, I like to do other things like work and then come home and go to bed. <laughs> but let's see. When I was out here watering this morning, I noticed that there was a pepper, which I could probably pick. Yeah, let's see right here. Look at that. And I just might do that in a couple of days. Very exciting. The celery is still here. I haven't seen the rabbits in a couple of days. The other morning it was out climbing on the rock pile. But then I haven't seen it since. This butterfly bush where the butterflies were just taking a rest is huge. And I did not cut those branches back yet. Eh, I may not. I'm still thinking about it. The onions, not doing a whole heck of a lot. That butterfly bush has opened up beautiful. And you can come out and deadhead all these spent flowers. But you don't have to. That's one thing about the butterfly bush. It'll just keep blooming. But if you want to keep it looking pretty, you just come out and take the, the spent head off. But I like it because you don't have to do it. Zucchini's getting nice and big. Oh, look, there's a couple little zucchinis forming down there. That's exciting. This one's gotten really big, just just over the week. I mean, it's gotten huge. Look at those gorgeous blooms. I haven't been seeing many bees. I just saw one on the butterfly bush. I don't know if it's because of our cold weather or what. Usually I've got honeybees galore. They also love all the stuff I plant for the pollinators. Not a whole heck of a lot going on here either. I need to stake up a couple of the tomatoes, but like I said, it's been cold. I haven't wanted to come out. Peas are still latched on, but they're not getting very big. We need the sun. A hummingbird just buzzed my head. Look at this one. I just love the color of this butterfly bush. It's so pretty. It's not as fragrant as the lavender one, though. It's just beautiful. I mean, it has a nice scent, but it's nowhere near as fragrant. So we're forecasted on Monday and Tuesday to have weather up in the 90s. And I'm really counting on that because we need some sunshine to get this stuff growing. That little start that I made... That's another butterfly bush. It's doing pretty good. These grow so fast. They grow like weeds. Like next year, it'll be probably as big as the other ones. There's a rat living in those rocks over there. And you can see its little it's little path, those are its holes, where it comes and goes from. What it's doing, I have no idea, but until it tries to come in the house, it can just do whatever it wants. The green beans, well, they've recovered from whatever ate them, but they're, they're not growing real fast. I think they've doubled in size, though, from last week, wouldn't you say? I'm not sure how much food we're going to get out of this garden because it's just really slow going. And then this tomato, it needs me to come and stake it up. It's, it's actually gotten very tall. Which I will stake it up eventually. 
this one has a little tomato on it. Let's see. This is one of the early girls. Where is it? See? In a normal year where we had sunshine, I would probably pick that off and let the plant get bigger, but we're in a time crunch here. We're not getting the sun like we normally do. Now this is very exciting. This is an update. Look. Dahlias are starting to open up. This one is not my favorite, but it's really pretty. These are the first blooms, so they're not big. They usually are twice the size. And I definitely need to get out here and stake those up. They will collapse over the, with the weight of the flower blooms. They'll topple the entire plant. Got some crocosamy about to open up. Hummingbirds and butterflies love this stuff. They get little, this one gets little orange flowers and it stays pretty short. There are other varieties that will get six feet tall. This dahlia is a beast. That's a huge plant. And if I don't stake it up, it'll be on the ground real soon. Staking them up is like my least favorite thing to do. And if you remember last week, how sick this one was looking, it's really trying to survive. Still doesn't look great, but last week it looked practically dead. I mean, it's, it's really making a comeback. You can hear all the little songbirds. The irises that I transplanted are surviving. I'll let them do their thing before I cut back the foliage. Roadies aren't gonna do much, but look at that butterfly bush, you guys. That thing is huge. So did you know that in Oregon and Washington, butterfly bush are illegal? So if you have an original butterfly bush, you can keep it, but they're no longer available to buy in the nursery. So, they have these dwarf varieties, and I don't think this one's going to get any taller. I want to say, well, how tall is a fence? Well, it's at least two, three feet taller than a fence. Oh, no, that thing is huge, and it's gorgeous. I mean, just look at that, and it's so fragrant. When the sun is shining, you can just smell the sweetness in the air. I, I just, I love butterfly bush. And the blood good maple is beautiful. Year three, looking nice and healthy. I got that off of Craigslist. There's a guy out in Gresham, Oregon that grows them and he was awesome. He brought it here and put it there. So all I had to do was dig, dig the hole. Some more dahlias. I'm not sure if these guys are getting enough sun. All right. Oh, let me get out of the shot here. The salvia is looking beautiful. In a couple of weeks, I'm hoping we're just going to see the swarming with hun honeybees. They just, they love it. Like, they don't get off of it all day, just honeybees. Oh, the sun is starting to come out. I'm going to have to hurry up and get... Bella out here and try to photograph some stuff. I have found that taking pictures of tie-dye in the morning light before the sun comes out, things just look a lot better. But here's just the random kind of wild garden looking pretty. Got some daisies opening up. I don't really know exactly what I put in here. I just grabbed the tag. It said pollinator. I stuffed it in there daisies, hot lips. These orange ones sure are pretty. The Shasta daisies look cute. But that's about it, really. Not a whole heck of a lot. And then these deadly rocks. I'll just 
I'll walk over here. So it looks kind of crazy that I have a pot just randomly sitting in the middle of the, I guess, would you call this a patio? I don't know. It's because it stops me from walking. I usually have it closer to the house, but I'm trying to get it, give it some sun. There's a huge cave-in in the rocks right there. It stops me from stepping in that cave-in and breaking my neck. The original owner of this home back in the 50s, like the very first person that built this home, did all this rock work and it's it's terrible. Like it's it's the worst thing ever. Someday it's going to have to come out. It's a death trap. But look at how pretty that looks. The canna lily is coming up nice. Something took a bite out of it right there. So that leaf will have a hole in it. But it's gorgeous. I just love this one. It's my favorite pot. This can of lilies on the third year too. It keeps coming back every year. Eventually they stop coming back. They get waterlogged. It's a tuber. And so, you know, eventually it's like a potato. It rots and then they don't come back, but it's been doing really well. Oh, the butterflies are back. I don't know, can you see that? See it? Oh, it stopped on the hydrangea there. I don't want to scare it away. But I kind of want to take footage of it. Let me see if I can get over there without terrifying it. God, just look at how beautiful those are. Oh, it's a big one. Look at that. Look how big that is. Oh, it's so pretty. I just want to show you. I'm way zoomed out, you guys. I'm not on top of it. That thing's like at least two and a half inches three inches wide. It's a big one. I wonder where its friend went. Yeah, they migrate through here. I don't really know a lot about monarch butterflies. I don't think they're born here, though. I think they come up from California. I see them every year. Hence why I have so much butterfly bush. But wouldn't you know it, I'm absolutely terrified of moths. But butterflies don't bother me. It's kind of crazy. I, I don't really have a fear of spiders either. Although, oh, 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 there it is. There it is. There's its friend. Oh, my God. It just darn near hit me in the head. Yeah, I don't have a fear of spiders unless they're in my bedroom. Oh, it's it's coming back. I don't want to move. I want to figure out where it's going to land. Oh, oh, oh. Listen to me. I'm so excited. Oh, I went to the neighbor's yard. Well, I'll wrap it up there. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And have fun gardening!